this pump and these three fans are all being controlled by this tiny little graphics card fan header to give us the best GPU temperatures possible. Let's find out how. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here. So a while back on my website, Pure Overclock, I wrote an article where I kind of just delve into what would be the best closed loop cooler that is compatible with the NZXT Kraken G12 bracket that you could use on a GPU. And so I did a bunch of research and came to the conclusion that I would think the Arctic Liquid Freezer 120 would be the greatest combo of price and performance. Now, there's one key stipulation though. NZXT does not officially support this cooler, so we're gonna have to see if it would actually do what we want it to do. So we're gonna actually review it. <laughs> we have the Arctic, Arctic Liquid Freezer, but instead of putting it on a CPU like we normally would, we're gonna put this thing on an R9 290X, and we are going to try to answer the question, is this probably the best CPU, well, GPU cooler that you can do that balances cost and performance. We're gonna answer one more question too. Can we find a way to control these fans and the fan speeds using the GPU header instead of having to plug them to pins on the motherboard? Because that was a question that came up on my review of the Kraken G12. And it got my mind to thinking, hmm, wonder if there's a way. Let's go ahead, jump right in. Okay guys, so I want to go through a quick closer look and I wanna explain while I'm at it, why I'm choosing the Liquid Freezer 120 as one of my, as basically my top pick for a GPU cooler. Now that's of course barring testing, but these are the things that I saw that I thought would make this a great unit. So the biggest thing here first off is look at this. Look how thick this radiator is. I mean, that's gonna give us a lot more surface area to work with for cooling. And it's not just how thick the radiator is. We've also got a really good amount of fin density, it looks like. So I'm pretty impressed with that. I think that these two things are gonna give us some crazy amounts of cooling potential. Now, on top of that, I've also got the nice black hoses. I'm kind of, you know, fan of those. I feel like those are gonna look a little bit nicer when they're sticking out from the bottom of the GPU. And then, you know, we're not gonna get a good chance to see this, but you know, there's our, there's our Arctic that's gonna be facing downward. But the other important thing that we've got going on is we do have a nice copper block here. And you can see I got fingerprints all over it. I'm gonna have to wash it. We got a nice copper block here with, you know, the usual Acetec or cool it designed for the mounting and clip and stuff. So the pump's not gonna probably be super powerful, but I feel like that's gonna make that a really great unit to work with for cooling. All right, so let's talk about some things now that I'm doing. Now, first off, I'll go a quick overview. So I've already gotten the Kraken brackets back on here, and so they're mounted. But even though this says it supported an R9-290X, and the only thing that I might have to do is shimming it, I had to tweak the bracket ever so slightly to get it to line up with the holes. All I did is I just used a crescent wrench and I just had to kind of like bend those things in a little bit so it would match up with the holes. Kind of a pain in the butt. And that's one of the problems I still have with this crack in brackets is it's not that easy. But I got everything installed and if you'll notice, I grabbed about 20 of these little tiny heat sinks off Amazon for not too much. And I threw them in different spots. Now originally I just put them on the memory modules. Um, and that's because I was testing out the X62, so we'll have a comparison point. Um, but I decided to try something different this time. These are on the VRMs right here, and there's another little VRM right there. And you can tell because if you pull the heat sink off, you'll usually see some kind of thermal pad that's connecting the original heat sink to them. So in the case of Sapphire, we had a connection here and we had one little spot here. We're gonna see if that helps out with any of our cooling potential. Let's talk about controlling our fans using the GPU fan header. Okay guys, this is it. This is the magic right here. It's a fan hub. All right, that might not be so exciting. We do have, you know, pretty straight um, eight ports. So we got four on one side, four on the other. They are all PWM. 
So why is this going to make all the world of difference when it comes to controlling this unit? Well, there's one simple reason. Bam, right here. This is an adapter cable that I got, and I believe it was a Gelid was the company. I hope that's how you pronounce that. So this is a four pin PWM GPU fan connection, and it is adapting to just a normal PWM header. So Silverstone has this guy here, so we're gets to simply plug in here. And now, once we plug this header into the graphics card, make sure I got it lined up right, you want to do this first like this because once you put this this NZXT G12 on, you won't have you won't be able to reach this. Now we are going to control anything plugged into this fan hub with the GPU fan header. The reason why we're doing this is two reasons. One, obviously, it gives us more options. Now it will, unfortunately, for the pump and this little fan here, these are three pins headers. So they'll always run at full speed. They will not change because we won't have DC control for them. But they don't make noise, and we'll, we'll get into that here in a little bit. Well, hopefully the Arctic one does. I know this fan doesn't already. But the big, the important thing that we're going to want to control is going to be Arctic's fans right here. These guys are going to be the things that are going to make the noise. And so by controlling this fan here and making sure that it's up to snuff and not making too much noise, we can set fan curves within the GPU software itself. Now, the only thing is we could probably have used a splitter and done the same thing, but we don't want to overdraw the current on that one little fan header. It could, it could just cause our fans to run slower or it could damage something. So Silverstone has a SATA power connection to make sure that we provide adequate power to everything so that all our GPU header is going to do is control speeds. What do you think of that, guys? All right, let's go on and talk about some more steps. So if you'll notice, the brackets that come with the Liquid Freezer 120 look identical to the bracket, to the NZXT bracket. But for some weird reason, I could not get the pump to, to snap, to click on. You know, you have to do a little tiny twist to get it to click. It wouldn't do it, and I don't know why. Because, I mean, looking at everything that we got going on here, it looks like everything should be the same. I mean, I measured them up and stuff, but it just would not do it. So I had to do one more tweak to get this to work. So guys, if you're gonna do the same thing I'm doing here, do it with a little bit of caution because this isn't gonna, you know, and, and NZXT doesn't officially support this cooler, and so that's probably part of the reason why. But what I ended up doing that got it to work is all I had to do was just grab this little wrench and I would just stick it on these things and then just bend them down ever so slightly. And I did that all the way around in a circle. And then I was able to get that this pump block to actually snap on. So, and that, that's one of the huge problems I have with the NZXT G12. In general, I found that it gives me issues during the install. It's just one of those things that they're easy to work around, but it does put a little more time in it. So it's all around a good idea, but I'm hoping maybe we can see something better in the future. We'll talk about that as we get to the conclusion. For now, let me finish installing all this stuff here, getting it in the build, and let's start talking about how this performs. Okay guys, so before we go to the final install and the testing results, I just want to point out something that's pretty cool. So I'm running my temperature test with Rise of the Tomb Raider here. It seems to be the, the game that really turns on the heat. But here's the deal. I've overclocked my R9 290X, a GPU that already runs ridiculously hot. And is because it's from Sapphire, is already pretty well overclocked to the brink. I have easily put another 100 megahertz on the core. So this, this is stock 1,030 megahertz. And currently, I am running 1,130 megahertz. It's about an 8.5% increase. We are still only running a 54 degree GPU core temperature. And look at our VMR, VRMs. They're running about 82 degrees right now. Now, this is still heating up because I just got this started. 
But I mean, this is going to probably level out a couple more degrees above that and then I'll start pulling my averages. I usually let it heat up for 10 minutes. So here's one thing I wanted to give you guys a quick little tip on though. I'm going to come over here. So I'm using Wattman and I did try a little bit of Sapphire Tricks as well. And so as you can see, I'm using 100% hands fan speed because this Arctic liquid freezer has fantastic noise levels. We'll get into that more in a second. I wouldn't bother for anybody who's doing gaming messing with these things. Um, power limit might not be might be okay, but this GPU voltage, unless you're doing some heavy duty overclocking and trying to set records, I would I just wouldn't even bother. I would just come here to Radeon settings and with this liquid freezer or anything like this, I would just come over here and adjust the percentage here. This is the safest way to overclock. When I started messing with the trick settings and the GPU, my VRM temperature started skyrocketing. I mean, I got this, I actually got this temperature up to around 120 degrees, almost Celsius. And then it just shut down my card, which is good. I was really pushing the limits. I pushed the limits so that you guys don't have to. So really, you don't want these GPU VRM temperatures on either one to get much over 100. And if you're staying below 100, then you're pretty safe with the GPU thermal diodes, diodes saying low. So just wanted to point that out real quick, guys. Let's go ahead now, move on to the official test results and the finished setup on this liquid freezer. Okay, guys, here it is. The final install, the merging of the powers of Arctic and NZXT. So yeah, you can see here, we've got our bracket in place. Everything is, is good to go there. We've got our our whole unit with the two Arctic fans installed right in the front of the case. Now this is a full tower case. So these hoses are a little stretched. I mean, I wouldn't have minded to seeing these hoses go a little bit longer than that, but I mean, this isn't like pulled really, really tight or anything. So we're not doing bad at all. We've got all of our cables running in and kind of disappearing and being tucked away, which is great because of having a fan controller. Of course, you can't really see it, but the GPU is controlling this fan. So if I go into Trick software, or you can do the Radeon Wattman settings as well, I can set this to a fixed speed, and bam, these fans now are running at 100%. Arctic has done a great job of having very quiet fans. So let's talk about some testing results while I put this back to automatic. So, let's just get right down to it, guys. This is proving exactly what I wanted to see. If you look at the stock settings, if we don't change any of the fan curves, we can see that the NZXT Kraken X62 is going to be the top cooling performer. So our blue bars are our GPU temperatures, our purple bars are our VRM temperatures, and then our noise levels are gonna be the uh, dark red. And so with this, you can see that obviously the Kraken is winning the ultimate temperature contest, but the Arctic liquid freezer is not far behind and I didn't think it would be. See, this is the whole point I'm trying to, to, to I kind of assumed this, but I wanted to prove it. And that's that 120 millimeter rads are gonna be kind of like a perfect sweet spot of cooling without taking tons of space. And you're just gonna start having diminishing returns going up to anything larger. When we look at actually setting fan speeds according to noise levels, I've got my Kraken setting at about 70% because once you go to 100% speed on those, they're just super loud. I didn't even want to put up with that on a testing level. So at 70%, we've got a 47 level decibel level, which is, you know, just barely borderline of uncomfortable. And we were pulling a 51 degree v G GPU core. Now there would have been more cooling to be had, but look at how little that Arctic lags behind. They come up with a 55 degree GPU core as well. The VRM's only slightly increasing. And it's just at some point we start saying, hey, is it really worth it to spend or take up all that space in your case? Just to eat those couple few extra degrees. And if we just throw louder fans on this guy, we could probably get even more out of it too. I went ahead and overclocked the R9290X and we ended up with the same core temp, but those VRMs did raise up. 
But as I was mentioning before, you can push those VRM temperatures way, way higher before you'd have any issues. It looked like I was running into stability problems with the GPU core itself long before I was having issues with VRM temperatures. So this, guys, is exactly what I was thinking. Arctic probably has the ideal liquid cooling. There's just a few things I'd like to see changed. For one, these hoses weren't coming out the bottom and were said were coming out the sides. It'd be very easy to just tuck them along and then you actually have room to do crossfire or SLI. As it is, this is going to cover my bottom slot. So without any kind of PCI extension, I wouldn't be able to do it unless I could take the PCI all the way to the bottom. So I'd like to see something that was like that. But two, I'd really like to see some kind of form of backplating or something to kind of help reinforce. Some of the better cards that might do that, one particular brand that comes to mind is MSI. They always have a, it's separated back plating and under plating from the actual fan heat, heat sink combination. So MSIs are always really easy to disassemble and then you still have some reinforcement on the actual card. So I think MSI would be a prime prospect for this. But I'd really like to see is I'd like to see some of these units now that have pumps that are on the hoses and then have just a flat block that goes to the GPU and start making some dedicated units with the extra thick rads. Because I really, really like this extra thick on the 120 millimeter. Seems to really bump up some cooling performance. But it'd be neat if we could really streamline all this and actually make a complete GPU cooling unit. In the end though, this guy worked out great, even though there were some difficulties. But that's not Arctic's fault. They weren't officially supported. They're just a really darn good cooler that balances noise and performance excellently. Let's go ahead and wrap up this review, though, because we want to see if price is the final factor that really makes this an amazing product. Okay, guys, so this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Cost. How worth it? is this arctic liquid freezer in terms of price to performance this guy is a little over 67 dollars on amazon right now but if you look at the like something like the kraken x62 or for that matter a lot of liquid coolers on the market but the kraken 62 is over 150 dollars so i do a simple calculation I divide the cost by the degrees of temperature that we lower, and we can find out pretty easily how much we're paying for each degree we get to lower that temperature by. When you look at the Arctic Liquid Freezer 120, we're paying about $2.72 per degree that we get to lower that GPU temperature by. And that may sound good or bad. Maybe you're like, well, I don't really know. I need something to compare to. Okay. The NZXT Kraken X62 to keep maintain the same noise levels, but to lower those few extra degrees is gonna cost us over $5 per degree. It's nearly twice as much. And even if we do things like just adding the little fan controller in the adapter, we're still well under, well under what it costs to get a Kraken X62. This guy is a super huge bane for your buck. Now, that said, there's still some things that even on a CPU cooling level that while you're gonna get phenomenal performance, maybe you'd like a little better splash of color, maybe you'd like some more features. There is a lot of things that Arctic is doing bare bones to give you phenomenal performance. It's gonna get an Editor's Choice Award though because it is a fantastic performing unit even if it doesn't have all the RGB or software free features that other units have. The extra thick radiator and two fans are well worth the performance. Great job, Arctic. So guys, let me know in the comments what you think of this review. I will have links in the description below to not only things like my home site at Pure Overclock, I will have links to this Arctic cooler. I will also have links to the devices I use to GPU control it with the fan headers. So there'll be a link to the adapter that I use to, to take that four pin to a typical PWM fan header, the little bit larger one, and to the Silverstone fan hub that I use to control everything as well to make sure that I didn't pull, pull too much current from the GPU. So hopefully those things will help you out. 
Guys, let me know, how'd you like this project? Honestly, I loved this project. It was a lot of fun. It had its challenges, but I think it really became worth it in the end. Once again, let me know, and I will catch you later.